Th thank it's you very pretty much. Amazing. Um, what is it? It's not a biopic. It's not a behind the scenes. What is it? It's a friendship story. I think at the end it's a friendship story. Um, I mean, of course, it's based on um, the, sh the, the adventure of shooting the, the documentary El Las Urdes, Language and Bread, that Buñuel did on that time. But I, I was always surprised. I mean, when we were writing the script and we were investigating and everything, I mean, the, stor the story of him having Ramon Athin telling him, if, if I won the lottery, I will buy you the documentary. I will pay you the documentary. And three, four weeks later, he won the lottery. He kept his word, kept his word, and he paid him. I mean, he actually was the producer of the documentary. And I thought, wow, that, that's amazing. I, I don't know if nowadays people will keep his word. But then, minutes later, I thought, no, wait, wait, wait. Actually, we will be surprised of how many people actually will keep his word. And I think that's some way an homage to the good people that there is in the world. I mean, Ramon Athin was an amazing artist. And, but he was a, a, a character that was, his compromise with the, the society, the reality, it was amazing. He was having a schools for the, for the poor kids on, on, on West Can. He, he was some, a, a really, really good person on that time. No? And the friendship that they had, it was really special. I remember when we had the chance to talk with uh, Juan Luis Buñuel, the son of, of Luis Buñuel in, in Paris, and he was telling us that every time his, his father was actually talking about Ramon Athin, he couldn't speak. His, his, his voice was, was breaking of the emotion of remembering his friend. And that friendship, that's, that's, that was something really special. That what we tried to show a little bit in the film, you know, this, this amazing friendship and these great persons that we are. That they are. <coughs> During that period, Renoir was sort of in a transition, wasn't he? he was transi can, you, can, you, can you talk about that? Well, um, he was involved in all these uh, like boiling moment, intellectual moment where the surrealists and all these kind of things. And he was kind of it in it. And I say kind of it because I think he never actually subscribed him saying, I am a surrealist. Uh, but he was with, big, with this big influence of Dali, that he was a good friend of him at that time. And he did, they did together the Sharon Dalou, and then later on they were going to go together the Lake Door by, by, because at that time Dali met Gala, he couldn't make the film. But that film had a great influence on Dali. Of Dali. But somehow when he went to Las Urdes, he tried to get rid of that influence and try to find his own way to make film. He, he was trying to do this documentary, to change the world, to change Las Rures, to make a better place. But he didn't realize that actually this place was changing him. And uh, after that, of course, he had to emigrate. And he, he took about 17 years to do his own film as an artist that was Los Olvidados. And he did an amazing film. And you can see that it's a terribly linked uh, to Las Urdes. No? I mean, he learned all, during all this time, he learned the techniques and he did uh, many things in, in Mexico, but when he did Los Olvidados, he almost he exploded. And then after that, all his way to, to make the surrealism of Buñuel, it was more based not in the images, but more in the human soul, in the way we behave. And that's why I think if you see nowadays his films, didn't age too much because we didn't age too much. The, the way we behave, it's almost the same. So I think that's what makes this change no? in, in Las Urdes. We say that in Las Urdes, it was a young director, 30, 32 years old, who was trying to find his own way. And out of Las Urdes, it, it went out Luis Buñuel. So in the film, you have, you have flashbacks to his childhood. Talk about those. Well, these are, I mean, one of the first things that I saw when, when we started to do the film, it was, I mean, this film is based on a, on a graphic novel that was on 10 years ago. And I mean, it's totally different things. I mean, we, we were uh, 
based on that novel, on the graphic novel. But when I read it, I was like, I kind of agree with some of the things here. And I asked why. Because you don't see why he's acting the way he's acting. And I say, okay, I want to show why this artist is acting the way he's acting. You cannot understand an artist the way he's doing the things if you don't understand where it comes from. And actually, understanding all his conflicts that he had on his childhood, it helped you a little bit more to understand what is going to happen later. I mean, when he was a child, his father was a terribly authoritarian person. I mean, they are wealthy, but he never had his father telling him, I love you. That was something that on that age, on that time, it was nonsense. Men, it will never tell his son, he have to be a man. But he was a sensible person. So this contradiction, it was always inside of him. And you can see some of it in, in, in the films. No? I mean, all the, the, all the conflict with, with, uh, with Dali and all these kind of things, it's what we try to show with all these sequences. It's almost like we are opening a small door. We are picking a little bit what's inside of his head. All this complexity of the personality. That was we were trying to show in the film. It's not a character where you can say, okay, this character is good guy and is good guy. No, no. Buñuel, it was like this. It's a contradictory character. There is things that he do that you might like, other things you might not like. But we have to be honest. We cannot make soft and all this kind of thing. The society on that time was a different society than nowadays. It was extremely machist. Uh, Animal rights, that's science fiction for 1932. So they didn't exist. We have to be honest with that. We cannot recreate that because we don't like it. I mean, that's one of the things that we try to be honest with, with what we are telling. Um, several times you cut from your film to Buñuel's film. Um, can you describe, can you tell us why you chose those particular scenes to show? Well, first of all, because uh, there is no better way to show what was happening there than actually what Buñuel already filmed. I mean, we couldn't improve that. That was great. So having the chance to put these images there and trying to show what they were looking through the camera when they were shooting that, and having these images actually tell you what was the process that were going in his head? I mean, we're building all these, I will not say craziness, but I will say more conflict that there was building in, in him when trying to, it's almost like he's having a birth. I mean, it's painful birth, but actually it's this process that it came at the end to a new Buñuel that was growing up. Uh, going out of Las Urdes. No? And the, the nice thing is that these images are kind of putting the film down in earth. So animation is telling you something different, but it's also at the same time pulling the, the, the film, the story, to the reality that that was actually really happened. So we might come up with whatever you want in the film, even there is a lot of things that are real and that is true story, but what no one can question is what actually was happening there and was filmed with Buñuel in 1932. So that gives us an amazing space to work. We can actually use animation to tell something different, go away from that. We already have this covered and we have a great contrast with colors and characters and many things that can put the audience to a different, a different place, to, a different, to know the characters a little bit better. A word about the animation itself. What is the difference between three frame and two frame? Can you explain? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean that was a, a choice that we did at the beginning. I mean we were actually really afraid that it might look. People might think that it's wrong. We had. I remember having these conversations with Manolo Galliano, the animation director, an amazing guy, and we were like, no, this we cannot do that because the, the classical way that we are used to see animation is like. Uh, a second, it has 24 frames. Normally, every drawing is shot uh, 
is, is filmed by two seconds, two frames. And that gives you the, the feeling that it's a fluid movement. Even Disney was using one drawing by frame, so it's even softer. But we were not making a soft film. The story was not soft. The story it was rough in some way. So by choosing doing this on threes and fours, it, it might look, it may, it, it make the animation look rough. Even the movement and everything, we were trying to make it softer, but it was there some roughness that the back of the head of the audience, it felt that this is not a Disney film with all the characters they move really softly. This was very realistic. We tried to make the animation not move too much, let the audience focus on the face of the characters, let the audience see the eyes of the characters, see what they are thinking and feeling. And then by having this roughness that is very subtle, even you can see the line of the drawings, it's not follow line, it's not a, a, just a soft line, it's a rough line. So everything, it's work to have this feeling of roughness. Overall, when you, we are in Las Urdes, I mean, when we are in Paris, you can see that the designs of the, of, the, of the houses and everything, it's more soft, it's more nice, but when you go, when you go to Las Urdes, that is not nice. I mean, because it was really rough on that. 